the Virginia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me uh, try to fill in some or get some blanks filled in here. I don't have the answers. The meeting took place uh, with WHO and CDC and FDA and others in February. In March, we know that they, there was a, a drift that was picked up of about 10 percent. Is that correct? Um, actually, it was lower than that. About 7 percent, I think it I saw in your like, testimony. It was like 4 percent. Okay. Do we know what April was? Because we've got a few numbers on the chart, but we've got a lot of question marks. And if you don't, you can In April, um, 14 viruses were shown that had reduced susceptibility to the strain, and that came out, that was out of 127, so that would be uh, 11 percent. Okay. And then we've got a number for May. Then June and July, we don't have another number on this chart until September. What were you all seeing in June, July, and August? Um, there were 80, in June, July, and August, there were 88 viruses identified from the whole world that had reduced um, uh, reaction. And so that comes to uh, 36 percent. Okay. With reduced, you know, that were mismatched. And then there's another meeting, and there's a different Southern Hemisphere uh, recommendation made, and we don't make the chance. I think that's fine. If you could get us the other numbers just so we can kind of track it, that would be great. But then Absolutely. my question comes up, and, and I'm happy for anybody to answer it. Why didn't we have the manufacturing capacity for the virus to do a, a turn somewhere in this process? I think you said uh, by June we were in the 36, uh, June, July, we were in the 36 percent range. Recognizing that flu season doesn't generally hit in a big way for another fair number of months, why does the United States lack that manufacturing capacity? And as a sub part of that, if there was the capability of producing, and I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly, a monovalent vaccine, why didn't we do so? And if you all could focus on that, any member of the panel, yeah, please. Maybe I can start and let Dr. Robinson continue. I think one thing to recognize in the summer is that we were looking at um, increasing proportions of H3N2 that were not well matched to the vaccine, but we still had the other th two or three different strains that were in the vaccine. So the concept of producing a monovalent vaccine, you, we might have been asking the American public to take a monovalent vaccine plus the tri- or quadrivalent seasonal vaccine. As we've been hearing, the American public isn't all that keen to get one flu vaccine a year would they really be lining up to get two? But there are, of course, major limitations in the manufacturing capacity to make two different products for the same season. So I'll let Dr. Robinson answer that. Dr. Robinson. Thank you. During the manufacturing season, they're producing three or four vaccine strains all the way into June, maybe even July, if it's a, if it's a tough year for them. At that time, I mean, most of those are egg-based. Um, at that time, uh, they were in the summer putting those together, what they call blending, and putting together to go forward with the, the vaccine that was released in September to go out on the shelves. The ability to have what was called uh, a recombinant vaccine that could be very quickly, that's certainly true. It can be maybe faster than some of the egg-based vaccines, but the um, capacity that we have right now with the licensed vaccine, the only one recombinant-based vaccine, is very, very small. It would have made a, a, a only been able to produce uh, maybe hundreds of thousands of, okay. of doses. Let me, let me ask the why on that. Is it because there's not a profit uh, no, no, to be no. made? One is it's a new vaccine. Okay. And two, they are, since it's a new vaccine, they are just scaling up to the market. They, this is an incumbent market, very competitive. And they were licensed in 2013. We are actually supporting their efforts in building a much larger facility. Uh, to produce maybe tens of tens of millions of doses, and so that they actually can, in that going forward, be able to produce say 50 million doses in four months of a monovalent vaccine for a, a pandemic, or and maybe in this case another influenza. So vaccine. you you anticipate that our capacity will be greater in the next couple of years than it is today to react. We, in, in, indeed, it will be because we will actually have the uh, cell-based influenza vaccine facility down in North Carolina that has a large capacity uh, will be able to have that product on the market. But again, they, they are limited in that they are making seasonal flu vaccine at the same time that we may have wanted to do that. The other thing is that these manufacturers also produce vaccines for the Southern Hemisphere. So when they came off of making the vaccine for the Northern Hemisphere, then they started back to actually making the, 
vaccine for the southern hemisphere. So we would, we would have had to make a decision and tell, tell them in September, stop doing that and go forward with a new vaccine. And uh, we know that that's a, that's a difficult um, mid-course shift. But, but, but if in the future had, it will be it will but be we possible. could have but we could have done that even in say July when we knew we were at 36 percent that had drifted it would have been very very difficult sir okay all right I appreciate it seeing my time is up and yield back I, I, I want to clarify something so you said 36 percent June July and we have a 50 percent cutoff so sometime in September the 50 percent number was significant enough to say okay we need to do something different in the southern hemisphere what is the magic number where you say we need to make a change here? Actually, it wasn't that there was something different. It's that every September the strains are reviewed worldwide. All well, why not? Just. Why not August? Why? I don't. What, what I'm concerned here is we want to break through. If there's some bureaucratic hurdles, this committee wants to help. Thank you. And if you yeah. say, well, we don't look at this until we don't really meet and discuss this until September, that's not a lot of solace for what. Uh, Mr. McKinley was raising for the hundreds of thousands of seniors and, and, and who are going to be sick. What, what's, what do we do? Right. Um, in, in September every year, the groups convene to review all the data for the southern hemisphere production, and that's because it takes that long to get vaccine that will be ready by, by that time. It's not, not because we're not looking all the way get that, um, but, all no, the no, way you, between. You said, you've already said, you can get a vaccine ready in 12 weeks when you needed a monovalent strain when there was a pandemic. Not, was not, it, wasn't that no. done in 2009? You did something quickly, no. Dr. Robinson? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, I, 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 I think in clear. 2009 um, the, the virus emerged in April. and May it was recognized that it was causing significant disease. And at that time a decision was made across the, the HHS that a monovalent vaccine would be pursued. And so all stops were pulled out to do that. But in point of fact, the first vaccine was not available from, for that H1N1 monovalent until the end of October. And the bulk of vaccine was not available until late December into January. So just point taken that the manufacturing process itself takes many months. And although we've to get, made to get to that critical number. I know it's Mr. Tonko's turn, but we're talking about just to start to give it to some seniors on a high-risk group. Mr. Tonko, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr.